In this lesson, we are going to be solving one step equation with rational numbers. Now, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what that means. So we are solving one step equations just like we did in the last video, but this time we're including rational numbers. So that's gonna look something like our decimals or fractions and then also having positive and negative numbers. But remember, all of the steps and the process and the goal for solving a one-step equation is gonna be the same. We still wanna find the value for the variable that makes the equation true. And in these examples, we see that the variable is x. And so we're looking for what value that we could, that x represents to make a true statement. We're gonna do that by isolating the variable using inverse operations. Remember, inverse operations mean that we, whatever is happening, we are going to undo with the opposite, or with the inverse operation. So, in this first example, we can see negative three and two tenths is being multiplied by x. So we're going to undo that operation using the inverse of multiplication, which is division. And over here on the right side, we're gonna see that x, that one half is being subtracted from x. So we're gonna use our inverse operations of subtraction, which is addition. And we, the last thing we wanna keep in mind is that we always wanna keep our equations balanced. So whatever you do to one side, you want to do to the other. Let's do a few practice problems together to give you a good idea of what this looks like. So we have x minus two and five tenths equals five and six tenths. Now, in order to do the inverse operation of subtraction, we are gonna add two and five tenths to both sides of our equation. And that helps us to keep everything balanced. Remember what we do to one side, we're gonna do to the other. This negative two and five tenths and positive two and five tenths will cancel or become zero. And so I can rewrite this as x equals eight and one tenth. I always can check my answers by taking my value for x, my solution, and plugging it back into the original equation. So I can check by saying eight and one tenth minus two and five tenths equals five and six tenths. I'll do my math and see that five and six tenths is equal to five and six tenths. And that's a true statement. And that's what we said was the goal. Now let's go ahead and look at this next example. I have nine, oh, actually pause it and then try it on your own. Okay, now let's look at it. I have 90C equals 60. Remember that there's actually a hidden multiplication sign there. So we can also read that as 90 times C. We're gonna do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. So we're gonna divide by 90 on both sides. So once I do that, I have that C is equal to 60 over 90. Now, 60 over 90 is helpful, but I also recognize that this is not in its simplest form. And so I can look at my numbers 60 and 90, the numerator and the denominator, and decide what numbers are also factors that I can use to simplify. And because they both end in zero, I know that I can simplify them by a factor of 10 which really isn't changing anything. That's why I like to put it in the box. And I know that 60 divided by 10 is six, and nine divided by 10 is nine. And I know that six ninths is equal to 60 over 90, or 60 ninetieths. I also recognize once I get it a little smaller to six ninths, or a little simpler, I should say, that this is, there's also another factor that they both have in common, which is a factor of three. So, I actually could say that C is equal to two thirds. I can check my work by plugging that in, 90 times two thirds equals 60. I know that any whole number has a denominator of one. I can multiply 90 times two to get 180 numerator times numerator, one times three, which is my multiplying my denominators. 180 divided by three equals 60. And if I do my math, I will see that 60 is equal to 60. So again, we solved that correctly. Let's look at two more examples. 
In this example, we have k plus 3 equals 2 and 2 thirds. So here are those fractions again, which can be a little bit tricky, but if we pay close attention and really think through it, I know that we can do this together. So I have, I want to still do all the same things. Even though there's a fraction, the steps in the process are all the same. So I have k plus 3. I want to isolate k all by itself. And so I'm going to do the inverse of addition, which is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I'll have k on the left. And now this is where it gets a little bit tricky when it comes to fractions. I like to think of this as a vertical number line. I'm going to mark 0 in the middle. And that means that I'm starting up here at 2 and 2 thirds. And I want to take away or subtract 3. Well, when I draw my vertical number line, I can clearly see that to get from 2 and 2 thirds to 0 is going to take exactly 2 and 2 thirds. But that's not quite 3, so I'm going to have to go below 0. And I'm going to look at my number and I'm going to recognize that I'm actually just one third away from three. And so I can go with smaller amount, one third, which is below zero, so I will end up at negative one third. So I know that two and two thirds minus three is actually gonna result in a negative one third. Go ahead and pause the video and try the next one on your own. Let's see how you did. Okay, we have six, I'm sorry, we have D divided by six, and I know that the inverse operation of division is multiplication. I'm going to do that to both sides. We'll have that D is equal to negative, and I'll do my math to see that it is negative 16.2, or 16 and 2 tenths would be the exact way to say that. Awesome, so let's go ahead and now see how this applies to word problems. Um, and how we can set up our equation and solve. It says, donuts at Hole in One Donut Shop cost $1.25 each. How many donuts can Jade purchase if she has $6 in her wallet? So I like to look at the word problem and just kind of make a few notes to keep things clear in my mind. It says that donuts each cost $1.25. So I'm gonna write that a donut is $1.25 each. It says, how many donuts can Jade purchase if she has $6 in her wallet? So we know that Jade has $6. And the question wants to know how many donuts. And we can use the letter D, you can use X if you want, um, to represent the number of donuts. So let's go ahead and just think through this in a common sense way. I like to think about it what makes sense. Okay, so I know, let's pretend these are my donuts. So I know one donut is gonna cost $1.25. If I buy another donut, it's gonna cost another $1.25. So, and if I buy a third donut, it's going to cost another $1.25. Now, this is, essentially, we could add it up like they might do at a register, but when we add over and over again, repeated addition is another way to, we can describe that with multiplication. So, I can actually say that $1.25 per donut, D, because that's what I said donuts were going to be represented by, equals $6.00. So this is saying $1.25 times the number of donuts is equal to six because we can't spend more than $6. That's all she has in her wallet. So I'm going to do the inverse of, the, of multiplication, which is division. And when I do the math, I see that D is equal to four and eight tenths. Now let's think about it. If you go to the donut shop, can you buy eight tenths of a donut? Well, probably not, right? Um, so we have to think, well, can Jade buy four donuts or can she buy five donuts? Now, it's very tempting to say, well, she can buy five because four and eight tenths rounds up to five. But actually, she wouldn't have enough money to buy five. So in order for her to only spend $6 or less than that, she can only buy four donuts. Okay, great job, everyone. We have one more word problem that I want you to try on your own.
before we get started. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this. This says that two angles are complementary. If the measure of the first angle is 62 and 6 tenths degrees, what is the measure of the second angle? Another thing I noticed is I noticed two things. So it said the angles are complementary, and it also shows me right here that they're also right angles. So angles can be complementary and right angles, but that helps me to know and remember that a complementary angle that means that there are two angle measures that add up to have a sum of 90 degrees. So we know the first angle measure down here is 62 and 6 tenths, and we want to know the second. So I'm going to represent x with the second, and I know that two complementary angles have a sum, sum means addition, of 90. So I'm going to set up my equation as 62 and 6 tenths plus x, which is the measure of angle 2, equals 90 degrees. I can go ahead and solve, and I still want to isolate x over here on the left, so I'm going to have to remove 62 and 6 tenths. This is a positive value. It doesn't have a sign in front of it, but because it doesn't, we know that it's positive. And so we're going to have to use subtraction to move it to the other side. You want to be real careful to include your place values here so that you don't make a mistake with your subtraction. We have x over here on the left, and we have 27 and 4 tenths as the number of degrees that it take um, that measure the measure of angle two. Awesome. Well, you all did a great job solving one step equations with rational numbers. Feel free to go back and rewatch any of the questions. And if you need a little bit more practice, you're going to see that there are five additional questions that will come up in the next few slides.